Well, it's time to talk about another person that influenced me. Um, I want to mention these are not in any specific order that I know of. What do I mean by that? Well, I've said that God's in control, so he may have a specific way he wants these to come across. However, I'll just say that this guy was in my mind, so I... Um, and he kind of was early in my life, so I, I've got him here. This person was a farmer. He came from Holland. He still had the accent and everything else. It's a big man. I mean, you know, six two, six three. I don't know. Both his sons, though, were even bigger. Well, heck, his wife was probably six foot. Um, <laughs> she definitely was bigger than me. And I don't mean fat. I mean, they were just tall, you know, husky people. Um, and he was a very proud man. Very sure of himself when he did things. Um didn't get didn't get the impression that he doubted himself when he would make a decision and um, and that was very influential to me now we met barely though but we met when we were going to the same church in Tawny Town um, when he moved into the area, somehow him and his wife found this church and started bringing their boys to it. In fact, it was funny because my mother was one of the Sunday school teachers and the one um, boy would challenge her ideas on Christianity. Um, you might say he understood more about God than she did and uh, it really made her try very hard to figure out the truth she didn't want to just come back with what she wanted to believe so here I am supposed to be talking about this guy anyway <laughs> um, that might give you an idea about the family as a whole as far as being Christians and and all and he was in um, part of World War two and I believe if I understand right him or his wife or maybe both actually watched their um, parents get killed by the Nazis so anyway so I knew of him because of church one day though and I, it was around a meal time, I guess. He, um, it might have been breakfast. He calls me. It was a Saturday. He calls and he asks for me. And I answer the phone and I know who he is. And he's telling me that he has this shaft that's broken in his skid loader. And he needs a new one made. Now I have this huge lathe out in the barn. And and there's a whole bunch of problems with it. And I just don't think. And plus I've never bought any specific tooling for it. So I have no idea how I would ever make this. Also I needed to cut a keyway. I did have a mill. Again, with no tooling that I specifically bought for it. He just said over the phone, I tried to get out of it, you might say. And he just said, Kevin, I know you can do it. He says, there's no doubt in my mind. And so I said, all right, bring it over and let's see if we can make it. I go out in the, I said barn shed dirt floor it's cold out this shaft isn't that big 
but I figure out that I'm going to have to make the shaft all in one setup because my chuck runs so far out of true that I, if once I turn it, I can never take it and reset it. I cannot make a mistake and I don't have any of the right tooling to do it. And I work on this thing and I cut it out of this big chunk of <laughs> steel that I had. When I would get close to a finished diameter, I was afraid to trust the machine to get it to diameter. So I would file it um, on the lathe, of course, till I had a measurement that, that looked right. I actually did get it done on the lathe and I was able to find a mill cutter that was the right width for the key so that I could cut a keyway for it um, to drive the shaft. It drove the distributor on a skid steer loader. He sat there on this chair, I, on this stool that I had made, smoking non-filter camels, which I'm going to tell you don't do that because he died of cancer, lung cancer. But as confident as could be, and he just sat there. Now, I was glad that he didn't make me nervous, um, but it just took it forever for me to make this little shaft. I got it cut, I got everything, I double, triple measured everything and anything on it. Um, it was quite difficult uh, for what I had. That was the problem. It was my equipment that made it difficult. The shaft was something that, you know, anybody would have thought is as easy as can be to make. So anyway, I gave it to him and he took it home and he said he knew I could do it and I said well I guess that's about as good as I can do it, at least with what I have and he called me back up that same day and he told me he says Kevin it worked perfect he says we had a file on it a little bit but he says it worked perfect we're back to running he says and i knew you could do it i said well thank you i said i'm glad it worked out for you he says you know you ought to get into this kind of business i said well i never really thought about it but you know i guess it would be something that people need he says well he says i definitely think you could you know be of a lot of assistance for us farmers and from then on, for whatever reason, I seemed to move in that direction. And ultimately, I ended up opening up my business. I called it Metal Magic. I didn't want to uh, narrow myself to just farm-related stuff, even though my zoning was only uh, farming. I wasn't allowed to do any other kind of work legally of course i did all the time but <laughs> i just tried not to make it look real obvious you know and um and anyway i can say this every time he came in the shop there was no doubt in my mind that i would succeed at doing whatever he asked and he asked some crazy things. That little shaft was just the beginning. From then on, even though I had better equipment, he definitely challenged everything I had for equipment. He challenged my understanding of engineering and physics. He challenged my ability to weld, to paint, to fabricate everything. And yet, Whenever it was for him, I always knew I would succeed. And part of it is because he always had absolute 100% faith in me. He had no doubt that I would, I would succeed. 
unfortunately that didn't um, make my business uh, successful profit wise and um, and so in the end I you know ended up closing the business but every time I would see his wife after he passed away she would mention how Bill just thought that I was fantastic really I mean literally that's how he looked at me and he took a hundred percent credit for starting me in the direction of having my own business <laughs> and um, I guess I'd have to say he's right I probably would not have considered that I was really thinking about cars and racing up until then um, and I really didn't give myself enough credit either for figuring out how to make that shaft, but I had no choice. <laughs> he wasn't going to let me go with anything less than success. So um, there's another person that has been, been a major influence on me and someone that I'll never forget. And you might ask yourself, you know, did that all just happen by accident? I don't believe so. There's no way you can tell me that God was in that somewhere. And that's before I gave my life to him. So, um, talk to you next time. <laughs>